Hello again, everyone. I'm back with Jen Dayton, who is the head of our collection development here at the library, for another five minutes with Jen. She's bringing us a whole new assortment of books that will be, make very good book group reads. Jen? Thanks, Marianne. Hi, everybody. I am Jen Dayton. I'm the collection development manager here at the library, and welcome to the Mother's Day edition of Five Minutes with Jen. These are book group reads that um, feature mother-child relationships, and we think they are amazingly worthy for your book group. The first book is Mary Coyne. Marissa Silver takes a look at the Dorothea Lange, the iconic Dorothea Lange photograph from the Great Depression, the Dust Bowl era, and weaves a whole world around it. Marianne's book group is currently taking on this read, and they seem to be enjoying it a great deal. We're getting lots of very positive comments about this one. It's very readable. It looks at three, gen three generations, starting with the woman in the photograph and going through to the present day. And it examines how lies can change the landscape of a family. It's a wonderful, wonderful read. The Hand That First Held Mine by Maggie O'Farrell was the Costa Wit breadwinner a couple of years ago. She takes a look at the lives of two women. One woman, in 1950s London art scene who runs away from, rural, from uh, rural England to join that scene in London, and a modern day woman who's so crippled by postpartum depression that she can't see straight. Somehow these two women are connected, and O'Farrell weaves these two worlds together beautifully. Um, the writing is beautiful, and again, it was an award winner, so you're guaranteed a good read and a really good discussion for your group. We're now moving on to nonfiction. Chanel Bonfire by Wendy Lawless begins with her mother in the Dakota having just broken up with her second husband who she's been married to for maybe 20 minutes. Um, they've broken up and she's taken a whole handful of sleeping pills and she is trying to commit suicide. Um, Wendy's childhood was anything but normal. It is fantastically dysfunctional and it's a lot of fun. She writes beautifully um, and you'll be really happy this is not your mom. Moving on to the theme of, thank God this is not my mom. Uh, if you haven't read Jeanette Ball's Glass Castle, you really must. Um, the book begins with Jeanette in a cab in New York on a cold and rainy night, looking out the window, and she sees her mother digging through a dumpster for food while she's on her way to a swank party. When the book opens, you think, how can this woman have any redemption to be allowing her mom to live on the streets this way? And then Jeanette starts to spin the story of her childhood, and it is, an amazing, amazing story. We have this available as a book and a bag? We do indeed. And this is one of these books that won't die. It always is uh, somebody's reading list. So give it a try if you haven't read it already. Really wonderful. And our final book is Richard Russo's Elsewhere. Richard Russo's father once said to him, you know your mother's crazy. Don't all ex-husbands say that about their ex-wives? But in the case of Richard's mother, she really was. Um, but he looks at her with such love and devotion, and through the writing of Elsewhere, you learn all about how Richard has come to write his fiction, why the mill town that he grew up in was so important, um, and the relationships that that fostered. I can't say enough good things about Richard Russo's Elsewhere, and it would be really fun to read it in conjunction with something like Empire Falls. These are our selections for May. We hope you enjoy them. And if your group is interested in any of these books, please email us at bookgroups at darianlibrary.org and we'll get them out to you as soon as we can. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.